What's up world, this is Brad from Project Build Stuff and today we're turning this neglected corner of my backyard into this. As much as we hate to admit it, we all have that one neglected corner of our backyard that's overgrown and full of junk, and you're not alone, I certainly do as well. I got my garbage cans, some random outdoor tools, and even a small garden apparently. I didn't even know. But I think I have a really good plan to get this area cleaned up and super functional. So let's get everything pulled out of here first, and then we'll talk about the plan. With the retaining wall out of the way, let's look at what's left of my garden. It's pretty rough. Oh, these weeds are just dense and dangerous. Look at the size of those thorns. Man, they've already got me a few times. I think I need to bring in some reinforcements because look at how thick these stalks are. That's like the size of my finger. Ooh, I think I have just the right tool to clean up this whole mess. The Milwaukee M18 string trimmer really packs a punch. Just check my face out here. The power even scared me a little bit. This made quick work of all these big, thick weeds, and it's great to have for any outdoor projects you're gonna do around your home. I always like to keep my weeds and high grass in check. Be sure to check out the link down below in the description to this and all the other Milwaukee M18 tools that Home Depot offers. Thanks again, Home Depot, for sponsoring this video. This satellite dish pole is turning into way more of a headache than I anticipated. I thought it was gonna be a quick dig out and it is far worse than that. I even bent my metal pole trying to get it out. It's putting up a real fight. So let's run to Home Depot real quick, grab everything we need for this project and we can try to find something that will help us out with that. Let's see if the San Angelo bar will do the trick. <sighs> Almost there. We did it. Man, there is already so much more room for activities. With everything cleaned out of here, I have a nice blank slate to work from and it's looking really good. If your budget is real tight, you could just throw down some grass seed right now and call it a day and it would look great. But I want a little more bang out here and some awesome usability and storage. So over here closest to the house, I'm gonna build a small storage shed that I can keep all my outdoor equipment. And right here where I'm standing, I'm gonna build a small paver patio for the garbage cans to sit on to keep them out of the mud. I think it's gonna look awesome. Let's get to work and find out. To set these posts, I'm gonna be using Quickrete Fast Setting Concrete. This is the same thing I used in my last outdoor video, my fire pit, which I'll leave a link to right up here in the corner. 
This is a great product because you don't have to mix anything. Just pour it in the hole, add some water, and in less than an hour, it's fully cured. I'll show you. With our posts in place, we're gonna shift our focus away from the shed for a minute and down to the ground. We need to remove all the excess rocks and grass and level this whole area out so we can start putting in pavers. Then we're gonna have to dig down about four inches in this paver section so that we have a nice base for the pavers to lay on. It's gonna be a lot of backbreaking work, but we can do it. After a lot of sweating, our area is finally prepped for pavers. I ended up digging down about four to five inches. Normally, if you're setting pavers, you have to dig much deeper than that, between eight and 10 inches in order to accommodate for four inches of gravel as your base layer. That's so much gravel to buy and lug around and a lot deeper I'd have to dig this hole, which I did not want to do. So instead, I discovered this new product called Paver Base that's so much easier to use. It's super light and actually the same exact cost per square foot as the gravel. You just cut it to size and lay it down and you're ready to go. You can put your sand and your gravel right on top of this. So much easier, especially if you're doing this project all by yourself like me. As I'm flattening this out, it's real easy to see the low spots because they're not nearly as smooth. So I'm gonna use my final bag of sand to fill in those and then give it one more pass with the pipe. Now that all of our base layers are in place, we have a nice flat surface to start working with and finally laying our paver stones. I'm going with a simple, inexpensive Holland stone, which is great because you can do a ton of different patterns with it. It can get overwhelming real quickly. I'm going with this pattern right here because it's a nice 90 degree pattern, which will be easy to lay, but it gives a little bit of visual interest for this area. Barely got this done as the sun was going down, but man, it looks so good. Tomorrow, we finish up the shed. Back at it today, let's get this shed done.
framing this shed is going to require cutting a lot of really weird angles. We could use a protractor and try to figure out all of those angles, but that would be a giant pain. So instead, we're going to use relative measurements. We're going to screw or clamp our boards into place where they need to go, and then just scribe a line with our pencil that we can then go take to the circular saw and cut perfectly. They should fit in there just right, and we don't have to worry about any measurements or angles. Progress on the shed is coming along nicely and we have all the framing done. This thing is super solid and we'll have no problem holding up to all the snow and weather we get here in Indiana. But we're still missing a few things before we can finally put this to use. We still need a door, a roof, and some siding. So let's get back to work. For the siding on this shed, we're gonna be using cedar fence pickets. They're an affordable option that also hold up really well outdoors. I'm gonna be taking them into my shop to give them a little visual appeal on my table saw, but if you don't own a table saw, you can easily use them at their six inch width like they currently are, right on the side of your shed, and they'll look great. Our siding is almost complete, but I ran into a bit of an issue. I kind of nailed the gate shut. I wanted to continue these horizontal lines all the way across, but these top boards are locking the gate in place. So we're gonna grab our circular saw, release the gate, and clean up these top angles.
excited on how nicely this project came out. It is really starting to look incredible out here. We have come a long way from that embarrassing junk filled corner that we started with to something I'm actually proud of. I might have to add this area to the house tour and make all my future guests come out here and look at it. So you know I always like to be fully transparent with you guys about the cost of these projects for any of you that are getting ready to tackle it in your own home. So in total, I spent about $500 on this, $250 on the shed, and $250 on the pavers. If you were only going to do one of those, you could cut my cost in half. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed building it and figuring out and solving all the problems that came along with it. Be sure to subscribe down below so you can see me solve problems and build crazy things in the future. And until next time, it's your turn. Go build stuff.